Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand and begin our service this morning. I don't know about you, but I am excited. I said, I'm excited to see what God's going to do in this house this morning. This is the new moment. Let's just give him a hand clap. Praise God.
for some praise in the house this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody, lift your voices for a moment. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We praise you, O oh Lord. We magnify you. Hallelujah. See you, O oh God, in heaven and praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, somebody. Just for a moment, just lift your voice in this place. Come on, for a moment, just magnify him. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I magnify you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, O Lord. Mighty are you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, O Lord. You may be seated in the house this morning. I was sitting in prayer this morning, and I believe it was Brother Tenney, Brother Tripp, that brought this up, but I could be wrong. But he was talking about a wall, Brother David, and he said, a bricklayer was laying bricks one day, and he come across a brick, Brother Walter, and it had a little crack in it. But instead of discarding the brick, he mudded all around it, and he slid it in the wall. But then the next strong brick he put beside it, and he smacked it a little harder to put pressure on the crack brick. Then he come to a brick that had the corners knocked off. Well, he mudded around it, and he stuck it in the wall, and he put just a little more mud around the brick. Then he come to a brick that had been broken completely in half. And instead of it discarding that brick, he placed it on a corner. Made it fit to a place where it should have been. Well, come to say that all of the bricks, no matter how broken, Brother Shannon, no matter how cracked, were all a part of the wall. And when they were mudded together, they become a structure that cannot be moved. It was something about unity in the wall. It was something about strength in the wall and knowing your place. And knowing that God was the bricklayer. And that his spirit was wrapped around each and every one of us. No matter how strong, no matter how cracked, no matter how broken our life was. If we put our faith and our trust in him, we're going to be part of something greater. That's what we learned this morning, amen, that we can be part of something greater. It's not me by my, myself, but it's the Spirit of God in me that makes me who I am, amen. One more time, let's just lift our voices and clap our hands and magnify the Lord in the house this morning. He is worthy of our praise, and we thank the Lord for it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to begin to take up our offering. We have the wooden pans here this morning. This for our offering and the gold pans for our tithing. There's many ways we can give. Give a five, PayPal. You can also mail our cash and checks to be mailed to River Bend Pentecostals, 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Any way you give, you will be blessed. The Bible says that you give, and he'll be given back to you. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. So if you will, let's all stand in the house this morning. We're going to say this prayer with meaning, not just word, but say it from the abundance of your heart. Can we do that this morning? Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Press down, shaking together and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open head. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Come this morning and give your offer to God. God bless you. Yes, the world
We thought on what can happen whenever you don't let doubt have any room in your life. Whenever you just let complete faith rise up in your body. We learned about what can happen right after the day of Pentecost, Brother David. Whenever Peter and John were going to the temple, they said, silver and gold have I done, but rise up and walk. They said, they let complete faith. They let complete faith rise up in them. They didn't let doubt have anything. You look at the stories. You look at Jarius. Whenever Jesus came back from the other side, he was seeking after him on behalf of his daughter. The woman with the issue of blood. You look at the four friends that let the man down through the roof. They were seeking after Jesus because they had complete faith that they knew what he could do. I want to let you know that he still heals. He's still God. He's still in control. He still does what he does if we'll let him. If we believe, if we have faith to believe that he will do what he says he's going to do. Now the Bible talks about how the people would call on the elders of the church to pray for them. Is there any people in here that have faith this morning? Raise your hand. Every one of you that raised your hand, come to the front. We're about to see a display of faith in here like we've never seen before. I believe it. If you have any problem in your body, if you have any sickness, anything that you deal with, you call on one of these people up here. That word elder doesn't mean old person. That means somebody that's filled with the Spirit. That means somebody that's filled with faith. That means somebody that knows how to get a hold of God is about to pray for you in this place. If we would just realize that we have that power within us. He gave us the Holy Ghost to be able to minister to one another. He gave us the Holy Ghost to be able to lay hands and transfer the power of God himself into somebody else. To be able to take care of our problems. To be able to minister to one another in this place. In this time. We have the ability. You shall receive power once that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Let's use it this morning, church. Anybody, if you have a need, you ask the person beside you to lay hands on you and pray for you. If you have a desire, you ask the person beside you to pray for you and we're going to see miracles happen in this place. He's going to marvel at the faith that is in this house this morning if we will just take advantage of it in this place. So God, we're going to have to
so good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. But it is once again such an honor to be in the presence of the one true living God. Job said, I just thought I knew him. What a beautiful, beautiful, peaceful presence of the Holy Ghost that's in this place. So grateful for all of our guests. Can we let our guests know that we're glad to have them in the house of the Lord with us? job by the praise team this morning, once again ushering us into the presence of the Lord, amen, thankful for the rummage sale that went on Friday and Saturday, Sister Betty and, and her team of workers, and I'm not sure who all helped, but it was a success, 750 some odd dollars to go toward our young people, and uh, we're very, very grateful for the hard work that went in, and, and uh, for the connections that we made. I'm not above believing. We probably should have done this. We will next time, Sister Betty. Don't let me forget. But if we have another yard sale and there's some clothes, we're going to pray over every last one of them. Huh? And then when they put it on, they're going to feel them some Jesus. Amen. It's the will of God that everything we do be to reach the lost. Absolutely. We'll do it. We'll do it. You fellas, after church, go over in the youth room and pray over all that stuff. We're going to donate it, and the Lord's going to do a work. Amen? Amen. I believe it. Come on now. Right. Come on now. came from me, I would hope it already be saturated with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Amen. You can be seated. The rest of you can. Grateful for the body of Christ. Seventeen seventy two. And a very eclectic individual named John Newton penned an anthem that declares the beauty of God's grace, mercy, long-suffering, and promises, perhaps as well as it's ever been conveyed outside of the Bible. And that anthem has resonated throughout history. One estimate offered by John Newton's biographer says that this song is played 10 million times a year. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. T'was blind, but now I see. It's amazing grace. An anthem sang, perhaps known by everyone in this room right now, sung in both church settings and secular settings. I looked up the dictionary definition of amazing, and then I looked up amaze and amaze and amazement of the derivatives of that word. Each of these carry their own definition, but all carry this one phrase or some uh, uh, offshoot of it. And the definition for amazed, amazement, amazing, or any other uh, area of that uh, says in some form or another to be overwhelmed with wonder. One writer said there is no other word for grace but amazing. Now I will say this real quickly at the outset of my message. 
God forbid that amazing grace should become a cliche, cheapened by a poor understanding whereby we are relieved from any and all responsibility for our own salvation. God says in his word in the book of Romans, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Paul wrote to the Philippian church in Philippians 2, 12 and 13. He said, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The word fear means reverence and awe, and it uh, uh, typifies the inward response. Uh, the word trembling is the physical response. Uh, hear me well now. You cannot come into contact uh, with the creator of the world uh, without both an inward and an outward uh, awareness and response uh, yeah. to a power that's like no other power that this world has known. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is a collision between the awareness of God's grace and my own receptivity to what that grace affords me that results in the work of God being manifest. We are not here because we're good. We're not here because we're rich. We're not here we're here because of the grace of God. Right, right, right. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. When the book says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, anytime anybody brings up the amazing grace of God, there ought to be an unbelievable, overwhelming aura of respect that rises up in us. And it ought to manifest itself in a shout, in a clap. take place in this room right now where we graduate from living a life of want to I, I'm not preaching I'm not preaching to the hypocrite right now right. I'm not preaching to the one putting on the show but I'm preaching to the one who's walking with a limp and has got some scars and has got some bruises. But every day of your life, you wake up and you say, I want to be pleasing to God today. I want to be used to God today. I want to be a blessing that the Lord can bless today. I want to touch somebody today. I believe with all of my heart that a majority of the people in this room right now, that if you can take your mask off and if you can take away facade that you lived your life beside and if your desire would, would begin to radiate off of your face we wouldn't have to pump and prime we wouldn't have to wonder about this one or that one but because of his amazing grace every man, woman, boy or girl in here brother Larry would even be praying for somebody or being prayed for because we are in the vein of our revival He wants to bring you to a place where not only do we want to do his good pleasure, but where we can. Yes. 
Titus chapter 2, verse number 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. The book of Ezekiel, he said, I sought for somebody who would stand in the gap and make up the hedge because there was always, always a gap, Sister Maria, whereby mankind could not quite reach the fulfillment of what the Lord had for his people. He said, I sought for a man, but I couldn't find one. That's why God rolled himself in flesh and became that man. Uh, he became the intercessor for all of mankind. I wish I could paint a picture of how much love that it took for the God of glory, the God that is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient, who is the Alpha and the Omega, which is and was and is to come, the Almighty, to, be, to, to leave a place that is infinite and become finite in the flesh. Just like a sinful man. Oh, he didn't sin. Don't you think for one second he did? But he was, Brother Jerry, subject to every lust that you and I are. Every desire and every opportunity for sin was present in his flesh. But he overcame it, Brother Terrence, because his recognition of the plan of God coming to fruition was bigger than being happy in his own self. Grace. Everybody say grace. Grace. Well, what? It's a polarizing word. It's a polarizing word. So many people have their own definition of what it is. And some use it for justification. For not trying as hard as they should. Here's how I describe grace. That point... When I've done all I can, and God steps in and takes me the rest of the way. The word grace is from the Greek word charis or charis, C-H-A-R-I-S. And I read this definition and I don't know how I missed it. I know it's been there since before I was born, but I don't know how I missed it. We all know, of course, that grace is that unmerited favor of God. But this definition said God freely extending himself, reaching to a people so he can bless them. So they can find, reveal, and achieve that which is beyond them. The Lord does not manifest or pour out grace on somebody to just get them back to level ground. He gives brought grace so we can go into an arena beyond that which we can do by ourselves. Beyond their abilities, beyond their talents, and even their desire. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think of according to the power that worketh in us. See, it was his idea. I hope you stay with me this morning. I hope you stay with me this morning. This idea of grace, this idea that all have sinned and come short of the glory, giving us something that makes up the difference, that was his idea, not ours. That was his plan and not ours. He says, I will make a way where with regard to salvation and the propagation of the gospel, grace removes can't from their vocabulary. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation, again, that unmerited favor of God towards sinners whereby he has provided for their salvation. I've said this a thousand times. I'm going to make it a thousand and one. We have got to obliterate I'm not talking about wound, I'm not talking about hurt, but I'm talking about smash to smithereens of mentality that says I've got to get good so God will love me. We have got to destroy a mentality that says I've got to get this out, this out, this out. Come to Jesus and let him make you what he wants you to be. 
some commentaries about that word appear and it has the same connotation or the same meaning if you will as when in the beginning of Genesis God said let there be light and there was light it is the bursting forth of the creative power of God's salvation into a world darkened by sin And he spoke into the darkness. The light shined into the darkness. And the darkness couldn't stop it. Man. It was an event. Whereby grace was loosed upon all men. That event was the cross. Calvary. The ultimate sacrifice where once and for all salvation became available to whosoever will. I'll just say this real quickly. Our introduction to grace in the Bible is in Genesis chapter number 6 when it says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord gave Noah a plan whereby the world could be saved. But I will tell you that in Noah's life, grace was a door. Because they put, the Lord said, I want one window at the top and I want one door in the side. And as pretty as that ark was and as perfect as that ark was, Noah would not be saved until he went through the door. That's right. I want you to hear me right now. You are not just saved by osmosis. You are not just saved because God is good. You are saved because you acknowledge and receive the grace that he gives you and it allows you to go beyond where you are. Not just beyond, but all the way. Right. You understand that the Lord is not in the business of good try, good effort, good shot. When he makes something, he says it's good. And if it's not good, Brother Richard, he changes it till it is. Oh, come on. We live in a world and we live in a society that has become a... a arrive to a mentality that says it's okay to be mediocre. But I want you to know that attitude has no place in the kingdom of God. Oh, hear me right now. He paid for way more than what we're getting. He paid for way more than what we're experiencing. He paid for way more. He paid us for promises we're not seeing. Somebody's got to realize it. But his grace has moved into this room right now. is in this place right now. The Holy Ghost is in this place. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost came to do. The Holy Ghost came to prove the devil a liar. He is a liar and he's a father of it. He's a liar from the beginning. He's a fake. He's an imitator. He's a duplicator. And he has no power outside that of which God gave him. And I want you to know that the power of hell has no place in the realm of amazing grace. The power Calvary, the ultimate, what looked like defeat, was simply a precursor to the greatest victory the world has ever seen. Now, I make no, no uh, hesitation in saying this, nor do I mean any disrespect, but in the mind of God, the resurrection was not the greatest event that the world ever saw. Oh, I know it's a little sacrilegious. And I'm like, oh. 
Hear me right now. That was no big deal for the Lord. The greatest event that history will ever know is when the grace of God is received into the lives of men and women just like us. Right. Right. Oh, I don't think you heard me. I don't think you heard me. That's why the angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner comes to repentance. Because without you and I, without you and I receiving the grace of God, Calvary was for nothing. Brother David, without us, do you understand Hebrews chapter number 12 said, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. You know what the joy was? It's to watch grace come alive in us. Yes. 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 Huh. Well, I just got to keep moving and grooving. Because it's about to be old like a pot of neck bones. Home now. I need more money. I need a new truck. I need a new wife. I need a new husband. If I could get any of this stuff, it'd make me happy. That's a lie from hell. If you get this, it'll make you happy. Oh. Last week. I was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee at a, at a conference, the store conference. It's incredible. Hope to take some of our team with us next year when we go. But Brother Mark Morgan was ministering, and he ministered, and he said, the gift of faith is about to be loosed in this house. Now then you can feel the Holy Ghost. There's faith, and then there's the gift of faith. Different kind of deal. He began to pray, he began to prophesy, and he began to minister. And then he said... I'm, when I call out for you to take one step out of where you are, if you believe the gift of faith is going to be imparted unto you when you take that step. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, somebody starts saying that kind of stuff, oh, gee, money's in the house. I'm trying to get me some. Right. Right. Yeah. Huh? That's right. I, I want that. I want that. I, I don't like being a chump. I don't like falling short. I'm competitive. That's why Brother Shannon and I get so upset playing golf. Because I wanted to go out there the first day and be Tiger Woods. Can't happen. But let me tell you something. I don't have to be talented. I don't have to be blessed to be what God wants me to be in the kingdom of God. So when the time came, I stepped out in the aisle because I wanted it. And guess what? Nothing happened. Except the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I wrote it down in my thing. He said, I told you it never was about your performance anyway. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I told you it was never about your performance anyway. Because I don't know about you, but I've prayed. Lord, if you give me the chance, I'll be good. I'll pull it off. I'll do it. If you just give me the chance, I'll do it. And when I stepped out in the aisle, I expected the angels to go, da 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 Right. And the Lord just said, I've always been telling you, faith being loosed in you ain't got nothing to do with you. Except, where would we be as men and women of God if our faith toward others was a reflection of the work of grace in us. Yeah. See, what does that mean? I'm glad that you asked. Where would you be today if the Lord hadn't got a hold of you? Right. You think you're here because you're special? Right. You think you're here because you've got something that the Lord just said, you know, I can't live without? No. You're here because God, way back in the beginning, said them people are going to need me. I don't care who your mama is, who your daddy is. I don't care if you came up sleeping underneath the pew. I don't care if you was running the aisles when you were six months old. You needed the grace of God to become right. who you are. Right. 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 Oh, let me tell you right now. I'm going to tell you. You think everybody knows your business. 
I'm going to tell you from Brother David, from Sister Amanda, all the way around here to Brother Richard, all of us, if our lives begin to be displayed on a billboard that was over our head, there would be things start coming out that don't nobody know. Say, oh, I need to get off onto that. I'm not getting onto that. I ain't worried about that. But God forgave you of it. And God delivers you of it. What if my faith reflected that? What if my faith and the power of the Holy Ghost flowing through me reflected just what I know he's done in me. Because I feel like, say, I ain't never been drunk. I hadn't. I hadn't. But I'm going to tell you what I feel like, Brother Jerry, that I've had more of God's grace given to me than any other human being alive. Because if the Cinema of my life begin to unfold right here. Some of y'all just fall out dead of a heart attack. All of you that was born with the Holy Ghost. But you know something? I know, Brother Walter. I know what he's done in my life. And you know what that start? There's been a twist. The devil used to beat me up with my past. That the Lord done forgiven and forgot. He still beat me up with it. Can I get a witness in the house? Yeah. Yeah. He beat me up with my past. Preach under the anointing and then just slide under the door to go out, you know, like lowering the snake's belly because the devil starts saying, you didn't deserve that. Until I just started agreeing with it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But you know what I did? I turned that junk around on it. And I said, yep, I messed up. I sure did. And you were happy about it. But guess what? It didn't kill me. It didn't destroy me. You know what? It wasn't no problem for the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ to wash me clean. And if he didn't give up on me then, he ain't going to give up on me now. He's talking. That wasn't the Lord. I'm glad he hears a sinner's yes. prayer. Yes. Well, there's been 
times I came to him and I wasn't right. Amen. Matter of fact, Brother Jerry, every time, pretty near. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Which, ladies and gentlemen, you're there. When the presence of the Lord begins to move, you're in a heavenly place. Hear me now. The Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. It is a little taste of heaven when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse number seven. This is one of those scriptures that the Lord just put in there for this message. It wasn't there before. At least I don't think it was. That means I miss it. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. We get really close. We sing of his mighty acts, miracles, signs, and wonders. We sing how he brought his people through the water. How he brought the Hebrew boys out of the fire. We sing about David and as the Lord helped him slay the giant. We sing about Daniel who was a recipient of the angel shutting the mouth of the lions. We preach and sing and talk about he fed 4,000. He fed 5,000. The leftovers came from just a few loaves and fishes. We talk about him open the blinded eyes and make the lame to walk. And yes, even raise the dead. But all of these are what he has done. None of these tell us why. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you right now, he does not want to be known as the one that lets you kill giants. He doesn't be the one who want to be known as the one that makes you feel good. He doesn't want to be known for what he's done. He wants to be known for why he's done it. He does not have to show his power, his authority, and his might. Please hear me now because they don't save you. Why do you think, I preached this before, but why do you think there was only one time the Lord delivered somebody and he told them, go and tell somebody. That was the legion of Gadara. The devils were cast out of it. He said, go back to the house and tell everybody what's happened to you. Everybody else, or the most common, maybe not 100%, but the most common thing you heard him say was, don't go tell anybody. The Lord revealed to me why he did that. I've always been... I've always thought that was counterintuitive. That was, you know, like against the Bible. When he does something good to us, we got to go tell everybody. But here's the problem. Emotions wear off. And when you go to telling everybody what the Lord did for you in a paycheck or food or a new car or a new truck or even a healing, it's going to wear off. Come on now. Sister Maria, we saw the dead raised up, but it wore off. Those that ate 5,000, the 5,000 besides women and children, the 4,000, that was an incredible miracle, but they got hungry again. He fed 5,000, 4,000. John tells us he did enough miracles that if they wrote them all down, the world couldn't hold the books. But yet when he stood at Pilate's judgment hall, he stood alone. All men forsook him because miracle signs and wonders don't keep nobody. You want to know why? If he delivers you today, you're going to be hemmed up again tomorrow. Because you see, this life we live is just a repetition of living 
Some days we're high and some days we're low. Some days we feel good, some days we don't. And so the Lord can take away your aches and pains and bumps and bruises and you'll live your life. But in the morning, guess what? You stubbed your toe. You got hungry. And you know good and well we live in a what have you done for me lately world. You know he kept on. He kept on fighting, forsaken, beaten, shamed, and belittled. You know why he kept on? Because he had to make a way. He had to keep on because if he didn't keep on, we couldn't even get started. He had to make a way whereby we could make it. I want you to look at Ephesians 2 and 7 in the New Living Translation. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. He doesn't want to be famous as a miracle worker. He wants to be famous for his amazing grace. And the evidence and the witness of his amazing grace is found daily in the lives of men and women who step over the line into fulfillment, who with the grace of God lay hands on the sick and they recover, who with the grace of God overcome past and failures and, and generational curses and, and overcome dysfunctional family to stand as solid men and women of God and citizens in this world. You can, you can, you can. You can't has got to be obliterated from our vocabulary because of the grace of God. You can. I believe it. I know it sounds grandiose and cliche, but today really can't be the first day of the rest of your life. He said, I want to be able to point to you in future ages and say, look who they've become. Look who she's become. Look who he's become. Because there's nothing that impacts this world like somebody who's been changed from the inside out. That's right. That's right. Verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Because if it was of works, we'd brag on it. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. One translation says, for we, for we are his masterpiece. The enemy of our soul constantly flings condemnation at us. And hear me now, the world aligns itself with the enemy, not the Savior. Condemnation says you're no good. Conviction says you're better. Hear me now as I explain this to you. Here's what grace says. When God looks at us, here's what grace says. Are you with me? Come back next week. I'll do better. Here's what grace says. Are you ready, Sister Casey? Hell says, ah, nice try. Good try. Hell says, you gave it your best shot, just didn't make it. 
You know what God says? Now shut your mouth. That right there you're talking to, that's my masterpiece. You better get your tail out of here and leave her alone. You better get your behind out of there and leave him alone. Say, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's what the book says. Yeah. You oh, you're not with me, but you're about to be. When the enemy comes in like a flood, yeah. the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard right. against him. You know what that standard says? Mine. Yes. That flag he runs up over your life, you know what it says to hell? Jesus. And you know what he says to us through the words of grace? If you've been beat down, it didn't come from God. If you've been open, if you've had your self-esteem destroyed, and if you're told you're ugly, and if you're told you're no good, and you're dumb, and you're a loser, it did not come from God. You want to know why? You're his masterpiece. Stand with me. And you know what he says when he sees you? This is grace, Sister Marie. It's all grace. You know what grace says when he sees us? I made you for more than this. I made you for more. I made you for more than this. I made you to overcome. I made you to be victorious. I didn't make you to lose. I didn't make you to be from behind. Matter of fact, he said, you're the head and not the tail. You are from above and not beneath. You are the apple of his eye. Yes. What's that scripture say, son? I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and that my soul knoweth. Well, you know what that was? It was a statement of faith until Calvary. Yes. But with Calvary, it became a fact. Yes. Huh? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. So there was never a day when there became a assembly line of men and women that the Lord began to put out. But every person in this house, uh, you were made with tenderness. Uh, you were formed with purpose. Uh, you were created with the hand of God. Let's go to your place. Grace says, let's go find fulfillment. Come on, hear me now. And please don't, don't you misunderstand me. Y'all know how I feel about this and I preach. Grace ain't in the business of everybody gets a trophy. Grace says, come, let's go win. Come on, let's go win. But the trouble is, Brother Walker, sometimes winning looks like a cross. Sometimes winning looks like a mangled mess on the cross. But you know why he did it? So he could come into this house today and say, you might have lost every day of your life, but today's a new day. He said, because grace, the unmerited favor of God, when God extended himself and said, come go with me. The power of the Holy Ghost has been ministering this whole service. Yeah. Yeah. I want you say, well, I don't know if I can make it or not. Join the crowd. Join the crowd. There's only going to be one time when we're going to be able to speak with complete confidence. That's the same time Paul said, dying tomorrow probably. They're going to cut my head off in the morning. This is the last night I'm living. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. I've made it. Today we're going somewhere. Revival. Forgive me for taking so long this morning. But I want to let you know there's somebody, there's somebody in this house that you've been told your whole life you're done. You're no good. You've been living under a cloud of condemnation. But the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared. Remember what I told you that word means? It's just like he said, let there be light. Into this house today, there has been light spoken into your darkness. And God said, you're not through. You're just getting started, baby. Right. Yeah. He doesn't want to be famous for being the God and let's have a good day. He doesn't want to be famous for being the God of blessings or the God of miracles. 
He just wants to know that if he tarries for a hundred years, somebody in Cody Pikey's family, the Lord's going to be able to tap them on the shoulder and say, see Grandpa Cody, see Uncle Cody, he was going down. But I stepped in. Yeah. But I stepped in. Yes, sir. And I made not, I didn't just. Come on. I didn't just make everything all right. I grabbed him by the hand. I grabbed him by the hand. And I said, come go with me. Yeah. Come go with me. Yeah. Come on. I know it makes you a little nervous right now, but we're going places, my brother. We're going places, my brother. Give me that. You believe that? You believe that? You believe that? You want to say I believe it? I was born for Jesus. I was born there. But Jesus lifted me. But Jesus lifted me. Brother Shannon, how many more testimonies are we going to have to have till we really start believing? And when you walk through the door of this church, the electricity makes the hair stand yeah. up on your head. And you realize, you declare, I wonder who's getting delivered today. I wonder who's getting lost in the ministry today. I wonder who's getting filled in the baptism of the Lord. Thank you. 
Uncle Shannon, when you're in a jail cell and you're thinking, I had nothing, I had nobody, I lost it all. Brother Terrence, Brother Cody, when we're out there and we think there's nothing left. Brother Larry, when I know it all and I turn my back on it, but yet he said, I welcome you right back. Though you was in the pig pen, we're going to have a bigger party than we've ever had because you, my son, had come back. We don't have to, if you're not going to praise him over the cross, if you're not going to realize the love that he showed you on the cross, there's something in your life that he loved you, that he showed you grace, right. that he picked you up and lifted you up out of a place of darkness, a place of despair. Right. You've got your own story. I've got mine. He loves every one of us. And I wrote it. It just so happens that I wrote about that love this week in the bulletin. And it's been on my mind a lot lately that you can't, you cannot show that kind of love until you first realize the love that he gave you. Amen. And we've got to start being a loving church. Amen. But first we must realize that he loves us Amen. and that he shows us grace every day, every single day, every breath you take ain't promised. But he said, I'm going to have mercy on him. I'm going to have grace on him. That's my son. That's my daughter. And I love him. And dad said something to me a while back about prayer. He said, we've got to quit. And he may have preached it. I don't remember. He said, we've got to quit being, when somebody needs us to pray, we say, all I can do is pray. And I've heard of people leaving the church and we say, all we can do is love them. But that's all we can do, church. That's everything we can do is pray and love. That's everything that we're supposed to do. We don't have to do anything more. That's everything that we got to do, Brother Larry, is love. The greatest is love. Amen. I don't want to keep everybody all day, but leave this place and don't forget the love. Let that be your prayer. I, I said it last week in that song. Take me to the place, Lord, where your peace and your love overflow. Let me realize that love. Let me see that love. I don't ever want to forget that love because I want to show it to everybody that I can. I want to, when I leave this earth, the only thing that I'm leaving behind is my legacy. Everything that I do, people's going to forget. Right. Everything that I say, people's going to forget. Right. But they're going to remember who I love. Right. And I want to love everybody. Right. I want to show this world that I love them. I want to show my enemies that I love them. Yeah. I want to minister in love. I want to witness in love. Because that's the greatest. I can preach the greatest message. I can do the greatest stuff up here. But if I don't love church, I fail. Right. We've got to be a loving church because God loves us. Amen. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what he's done today? Hallelujah. If we kind of all let stand. And was there any birthdays this past week? Any at all? Any anniversaries? Oh, yeah, Mac Attack. Automate Chrislin just get up and sing to him because he's mad she missed his birthday. So, Chrislin's got, Chris, Chrislin's got to sing a little extra loud today. Was that the only one? Uh, I know I got everybody standing, but Mac, you're special. Let's sing to him. A happy birthday. Remember, ladies' prayer meeting is tomorrow night at 6.30, and every lady, please make it a point to, if you're not going to come regularly, make it a point once a year at least. Every month, ladies' prayer, make it a point to come to one, and you will be changed and you'll be blessed because of it. Riverbend kids, parents, please send pics for Mother's Day presentation. I'm assuming that's to Sister Kim and Sister Casey. Be getting with them and send them any pictures for that. Riverbend Kids also popcorn party is May the 26th, and you kids be thinking of bringing some friends to that. 
Section 4 Ladies Night is Friday, May 7th at 7 p.m. at Kennett United Pentecostal Church at the gym. The speaker is Sister Sue McGuire. Ages 12 and up is $12 a piece. Sign up is in the back of the church. And we have to know today if you're going to go or not. So if you're planning on going to Section 4 Ladies Night on uh, May the 7th at 7 o'clock, let them know today if you're going. Church cleaning this week is team number eight, Sister Maria, Sister Callie, and Brother Cody. And also the missionary, Brother Jim Robertson from the Philippines is going to be with us May the 19th. So that's going to be a special service. Uh, be in prayer about it, that God's going to do great things. Amen. So if we all can, let's stand. Brother David, why don't you dismiss us in prayer?